One of the benefits of the skeleton modeling is the fact that you can easily do the changes. So open one of the files on the browser and double click on a base component. This will navigate you to the base file. So here we can add some changes. In this case, we will apply the definition of the of the road. So in order to define the position of the hanger road, we need to define the sketch. So the sketch will look like that. Just a rectangle with some offset from the top to be able to place the hook on the hanger and then define the size as you can see on the screen. That's it. So this newly created solid body will emulate the hanger. Okay, let's make it a new solid. And then we need to transfer this newly created solid into our final assembly. So just give a name. Use manage, make components. And in this dialog choose no, since you don't want to make a new assembly, but you want to place a newly created file in an existing one. Choose the assembly location, click next and OK. So that's it. So you see the changes immediately appears on the assembly. There is no need to use constraints. The component is in place already. So now we can isolate the components that we will treat it as a position of the iBoxes, browse through the library, choose a full pool drawer. Now the copying process happens in the background. And when the component is on the place, it's enough to just choose where is the front, the top, and the side of the iBox. So that's it. We have the iBox component on the place. Now we can do the same with the remaining one. So isolate, newly created component, choose insert, browse, through the library structure choose the bar top front and one of the sides and that's it so the bar is on a place Now we want to make a pattern of the drawers. In order to know how far the next unit will be resided, let's project some of the geometry. Set it to be construction. And just apply the dimension, which will be driven dimension since there is no changes. I just want to know how far the next unit will be positioned. Click escape. Choose dimension properties using right click and define the name of the company of the parameter. Like the distance between drawers, for instance. That's it. So now we know what the distance will be. And this parameter is listed in the skeleton file, but it's not in assembly. So use parameters, choose link, or set this one as an exported parameter for an assembly. Now we know the distance, so we can just hide some of the components or make them transparent if you like. Okay. And we we'll set the bomb structure to be a reference for the bar. box position and now we can finally utilize the pattern you can also pick the hardware like the handle and the facade and the body of the drawer and 
then we can choose a pattern, choose the direction, the distance, and that's it. So now we have the eye boxes on in place. As you may see, they are on the right position. So what is left to do is to use a sculpt command which actually produces the holes and cutouts needed for a hardware mounting. Since in Woodward for Inventor, the hardware is not only automatically placed, but it also contains a hardware uh, holes geometry. So once the sculpt operation will be done, you will see that the panels contains the cutouts. You may see that some texture is disappearing, so you can use material assignment refresh in order to bring them back. This process may take a while since there is multiple pieces, faces, each of them contains their own appearance and the fresh process may take some time because of that. And there are the final results. The textures on a place and if you take a look at some of the panels, we can just right click and open it. This panel already contains all the holes needed for mounting the hardware. So we are ready for the next steps.